Good morning, YouTube. <clears throat> I'm here working on my friend Dave's 2005 Generation 1 FJR, and we're here to measure the valve clearance. And unfortunately, we're doing quite a bit of service to this bike in just one day. We're doing a tech day, checking the valves, changing the coolant, the brake fluid, the oil, the final drive oil, doing a lube job, all of that. So there's just no time to film this whole procedure unfortunately on this bike <clears throat> but I figured I would film just the actual uh, valve clearance portion checking so what we did is last night we got all the panels <clears throat> off the FJR drained the coolant and took out the spark plugs after the engine was you know moderately cool at least uh, got the valve cover off all that stuff and then let the engine sit overnight so that we can check the valve clearance with the engine cold so right now what you want to observe is this is the intake cam toward the uh, rear of the bike this is the intake cam and this is the exhaust cam and at the moment I have the exhaust cam <clears throat> of what I'm calling cylinder number one I'm doing cylinder one on the left side of the bike all the way this way two three four across um, so this would be the exhaust cams for cylinder one and I just want to show you how to use a feeler gauge to measure the clearance and so what I have is <laughs> I should have done this beforehand but I have two feeler gauges in my toolbox and come to find out this morning one of them doesn't even have shims thin enough to properly measure the FJR uh, clearances which are very very thin uh, I thought that they did because I got I, my units mixed up I thought that it was <clears throat> you know 15 thousandths of an inch was what we were going for and that's incorrect it's 15 or excuse me 0.15 millimeters on the uh, intake for the minimum clearance in 0.15 millimeters equates to six thousandths of an inch so these are very very thin shims so thankfully I have a second feeler gauge in my toolbox <clears throat> that uh, does have those shims on it but it doesn't have nearly as many as I would like I would much prefer to have more sizes so that I could more accurately size the clearances just you know uh, th this will do but if you're doing this yourself uh, Invest in a feeler gauge that has a lot of sizes really, really thin, especially in the ranges, and, and check that ahead of time. That's my advice. So my thinnest shim is 0.15 millimeters. That's six thousandths of an inch. That is the minimum clearance for an intake valve. My next larger shim is, just a moment, got to get them a little bit turned around here my next larger shim is 0 0.203 millimeters or eight thousandths of an inch and <clears throat> what uh, the minimum clearance for a exhaust valve is 0 0.18 millimeters so this 0 0.2 shim is just ever so slightly larger than the minimum exhaust valve clearance and then my next shim is 0.254 millimeters or ten thousandths of an inch. So these shims are stepping up, at least in the small range, by two thousandths of an inch, which is actually quite a bit when you're talking about valve clearances. So uh, the more shims you have in that range, the better to accurately measure the clearance. But this will do for this case. So. Um, this the FJR each cam is dual overhead cam so there's actually four valves per cylinder so this would be valve one back here and then this is valve two for uh, uh, on the exhaust side for cylinder one okay so what you'll notice I'm gonna slide in my thinnest shim six thousandths of an inch or 0.152 millimeters and on this back one it slides in incredibly easy just without any resistance whatsoever so 
that tells us that the gap is greater than this um, shim, which is what we would expect because we want the minimum clearance to be 0.15 for an exhaust valve, or 0.18 for an exhaust valve. For this uh, cam right here, it slides in, but it does give me just a little bit of resistance when it first goes in. And so that's like, oh, what, what is, I, is this correct or, you know, is, is the clearance over here too small? Well, this is where I wish I had more shims. But my next size up is, I got to get them separated. They keep getting together when I use them. So just a moment. Um, all right. So now let's go to my point two. 0.3 millimeter shim, eight thousandths of an inch. On this side, now I'm sliding in with a little bit of friction, um, a hair more than I was on this side. Okay, so now I'm getting pretty close to the actual value of clearance for this particular valve, just a little bit of friction. So this is pretty close to the actual value. This over here, at first, it doesn't want to go in. It's saying I'm too thick. However, I can, I, you gotta be careful because these sh shims are so thin, they'll bend easy, but I can get this in here. And once it is in there, it's definitely got some solid friction. So you just gotta give it a little bit of force. So I am content to say that this valve right here is not too small a clearance. I think especially if I had uh, more shims I would be able to know that for sure but um, the fact that this shim is in here is telling me the clearance is at least this much and there is you know uh, uh, friction in there so I, I guess what I'm gonna say for my notes is that this valve right here is pretty much exactly 0 0.203 millimeters it's this is 0 0.2 millimeters clearance which is in range this one over here I don't have an exact shim to measure, but I'm estimating it's at 0.22. And the reason is because then if I go one shim larger, which is, bear with me. Okay, so I step up to two thousandths of an inch to 10 thousandths of an inch or 0.25 millimeters. That shim will not go in at all. It, it definitely will not go in. And that 0.25 is basically the maximum clearance for an exhaust valve. So it, although the 0.2 millimeter shim goes in with quite a bit of resistance here and a little bit less here, I definitely know that these are both in range because this one, the maximum exhaust valve clearance, will not go in either. So. It's hard for me to measure the exact clearance for both of these, but I do know that they're both in acceptable range because I can measure the um, maximum allowable clearance and, and it won't go in. So I know I'm good on that end. So that, that's basically it for measuring an exhaust valve. And now all I do is rotate the engine clockwise as viewed from the crank bolt. Uh, slowly and by the way the this engine is incredibly easy to rotate there's hardly any compression to fight against um, so uh, anyway I all I do is get it to where each valve has the cam lobes pointing directly up away from the uh, valve bucket and then I measure the clearance and now like I said this is done with the engine stone cold we purposefully let this bike sit overnight it was driven to my house we took it all apart and then waited until morning to try to measure the clearance so the engine absolutely must be stone cold ambient temperature everywhere to get an accurate reading so all I'm gonna do now is just rotate the engine slowly uh, and measure all the exhaust valve clearances and all the intake valve clearances and and write them down on a piece of paper and then if I need to change any we will but hopefully we won't that would be a lot simpler for us but probably beneficial for you guys because you might get to see how that happens
But uh, anyway, hopefully that helps. Just a little short tutorial on measuring valve clearance.